deal with the subject of the third day. What's interesting about the discussion of John, the second chapter, is that the enemies of Christ, the enemies of Christ, the enemies of the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ use this passage. They use this passage. The, they didn't quote much of the Bible. And when they did quote it, it was usually wrong. The apostate Jews, they got this one right. It comes from John, the second chapter. And I'm picking this subject matter up in verse if you, uh, if you have a study Bible, you see it actually begins in verse 13. It's the first Passover it's not the actual first Passover, but it's the first Passover of the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's the first Passover of his earthly ministry. It's why it's described that way. And it occurs during that festival, Passover, one of the three major uh, tourist attractions of Israel. People from all over the world back, came back during one of those three, and that was Passover, was one of the big ones. And um, this is the passage where he uh, runs out the money changers over Passover. And, we, and, and so he scourges them and runs them out of the temple and, and declares, you've, uh, you've made my father's house a uh, house of, of thieves, a house of merchandise thieves. And, and he gives them scripture, and then he gets into verse 18 where I want to go. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, what sign can you give to us that you have the authority to run them off? What authority do you have to come into the temple of God and run anybody off? They want a sign that he has this authority. Listen to me. This is what a lot of people happen at Easter. They miss the sign. What was the sign that he gave them that he had the authority? What was the sign? He gave them a sign. What was the sign? He could run them out of the temple. That <laughs> he could run up. He could listen. That temple belongs to my father and is all about me. And you have changed the meaning of the temple from me to the public square of doing business. The father's business is salvation. Your business is making money. They don't belong in the same place. You understand that? So they want a sign. He gave one. I just cleaned the temple out. I just, <laughs> I did house cleaning. It's free. I won't charge you. What authority do you have to do it? I am the father of one. I am the only begotten son of the father, and this is his house. It belongs to me too. And you've turned my father's house into a house of merchandise, of money-making, and it's all about salvation. It's not about money. The church is not about money. The church is about salvation. When you make any of God's business about money and not about blood, you're in trouble. So give me a sign. They want a sign other than the sign they just got. And he gave them the Bible verse that says he has the authority to do it when he said to them, zeal for thy house will consume me. He said, there's my authority, the word of God and who I am. I belong to the family of I am who I am. That's the family I belong to. Nobody else in this, in this, in this temple belongs to a family like I belong to unless you, get, unless you take the blood serious. What sign? He said, you want more than what I just gave you? My goodness. He knew they people weren't paying attention. 
What sign? Jesus answered, destroy. He said, okay, here it is. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews therefore said, it took 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? You want a sign? There it is. When that sign comes, I gave you a sign. You rejected it. But let me tell you something, buddy, he says. When I give you the sign that I'm going to tell you I'll give you, you better pay close attention to it. And that sign would be, on the third day of my burial, I will be raised from the dead. Now, it's going to take them three and a half years to get there. But they are, in their lifetime, get a chance to see it. Listen to verse 22. Listen to verse 22. Because his, his disciples didn't get it either. William says you have to hear something ten times to get it. I, I, he's making a believer out of me. Listen to verse 22. Because verse 22 could well be you today. They were in the right place at the right time with the right person and missed the message. No accident you're here today. No accident I'm here today. And there's no accident the message I got today is important for us. Listen to verse 22 because you could well be in verse 22. When therefore he was raised from the dead. That's going to be about three and a half years. His disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know, that group. His disciples remembered that he said this. Three years later, they needed a sign just like the apostate Jews needed one. Let me tell you, three years is a long time to cycle the word of God. You ought to be cycling the word of God when you hear it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be three years later you go like ding, ding. His disciples remember that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which he had spoken. Listen, I'm proud of them that they got it three years later. I'm proud whenever you get it. But you ought to be getting it when you have, when it's hot, fresh, and ready. Because that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to your life. Shouldn't take you three years to get something that was hot off the burner. Right? Jesus gave him something hot off the burner. When I say that, you know what I mean? He gave him something hot off the burner. Something they desired to have, to know. It took them three years to get it. And when, even three years later, his disciples got it. His disciples got it. Who knows about the rest of the boys? They hung him on the cross. What will they do when he comes out from the grave? They hung him on a cross. What will they do when he comes out the third, third day of burial? There's the real question about Easter. Let us pray. The Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. These must be confessed through your priesthood of 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9. Needs to be confessed by yourself, by your own lips, about your own life in Christ. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Holy Spirit will minister the truth of this lesson, the essential importance of the third day for your life. Hot off the burner. Don't wait a month, two days, three days, or three years to get it. Get it while it's hot off the burner for your life is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the third day, listen to, listen to this. Destroy this temple, verse 19 out of our text. Destroy this temple, 
and in three days, I will raise it up. The third day, the third day of the burial of Christ mattered to Jesus. He preached it at the very beginning of his ministry. He preached it throughout his entire ministry and closed with it. He closed his ministry with this idea. I hear people say to me, what does it matter about the burial of three days? What does it matter? What matters is that he was raised from the dead. We all agree about Sunday. Up from the grave he arose. So what does it matter about three days? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus didn't die on Friday, buried on Saturday, and raised on Sunday. That's apostate. That's apostate teaching from the Word of God. That's apostate. He has to be in the ground of burial three days and three nights. Not part of one day and part of one night. Listen, three days and three nights is a whole day. Go get a hotel, and you'll find out you're going to get charged for a whole day. This idea that Jesus is an apostate teaching. He did not die on Friday. He was not buried on Saturday and raised on Sunday. It makes three days. That does not make three days. He's got to be in the grave, i.e. Sheol, for three days and three nights. So you've got to have a death on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, to have a Sunday message. You say, how can, that, how can people miss that? They don't read the Bible. They read commentaries. They don't pay attention when the pastor tells them that. They don't look it up. They don't study it. So I'm going to give it to you. Okay? I'm going to teach it to you today. And if you're a student of the Bible, just a half a wit of a student of the Bible, you will get this. So stop that foolishness. I'm telling you that the third day of burial, resurrection, was important to Jesus Christ. It was the first and last message he taught. You're going to find it consistent. Jesus makes it very clear. Destroy this temple, and in three days... Destroy the temple is his death. Would you agree with that? Please tell me. You know that? Okay, that's his death. Three days from his death, three days from his death, three days from his death, he's going to be raised from the dead. Tell me you understand that. There should be, if there was no other scripture from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself on his first sermon at Passover, this was what he taught. hot off the burner. If there was no, and there's plenty of more scripture. If that was the only one, it would be enough. Come from the mouth of Christ in his first summer right off, right off the hot, hot burner. But you see, his disciples didn't get it, and the apostate Jews didn't get it because they crucified him three and a half years later. So here's a very important Bible verse for you. It's taken from 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14. The natural man. The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. The natural man is the unbeliever. An unbeliever cannot understand this. But you know who is likened to the unbeliever? The carnal believer. 
The carnal believer cannot understand it either because both of them are not listening to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You can be a believer set in church and never get it. The disciples handpicked by Jesus Christ didn't get it. Verse 22. Did, I, did you read verse 20, John 2, 22? Did the disciples get it? No. You know when they got it? After he was raised from the dead. He went, he, they went like ding, ding. That's what he meant. should take you three years to get something this important. And why is it you don't get it? Because either you have the natural mind or the carnal mind. The natural mind of the unbeliever is like the carnal mind of a believer. They're looking to the flesh and not to the spirit to get truth. Because he was speaking of his body. So let's talk about a couple of things before we have to get out of here today. John records, and this is really important. John records that Jesus taught this doctrine at the beginning of the earthly ministry. Look what Matthew does. Matthew shows that this doctrine was a constant teaching to his disciples throughout his entire ministry. For example, Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse, verses uh, 38 through 40, is where he says, as Jonah was in the belly of the sea monster for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You know what the heart of the, you know, the heart of the earth? Well, you're standing on top. In the middle of it is a place called Hades. Hades is in the belly of the earth. And that's where Christ went when he died. His body was put in the tomb and his soul went to a place called Hades. I'm going to teach you on that next Sunday because you'll not take, there's no way you can get it off. I'm going to give you the one that's hot off the burner today. But next week I'm going to come back and teach on this. Where did he go and what did he do during three days and three nights? Matthew teaches it in John 12, chapter 38 through 40. Listen, he shows that Jesus taught it in, 16, in chapter 16, verses 21 to 23. That's the passage, you know, with Peter. Peter, when he teaches the disciples, Peter takes them aside and rebukes them for teaching that way. He tells them to get behind me, Satan, business. Then he teaches it again. Jesus teaching again in Matthew, the 17th chapter, verses 22, 23. He's teaching again in Matthew, the 20th chapter, 17 through 19. His ministry is headed to the cross. In chapter 26, he teaches again in verses 30, 35. Christ is headed to the cross. In chapter 27, Christ is now put in the grave, and they're still talking about it in chapter 27. He's already died on a cross, been buried, and the people are still discussing about it. The enemy is using chapter 27 to say, you better seal it because he has been saying that he would die and be raised on the third day. We want the tomb sealed, and the Pilate sealed it with the Roman seal because they said, we're fearful that the disciples will come and steal his body. That's the enemies that hung him on the cross are fearful of the third day of his burial. They're counting down. One, two, three. If he doesn't come out, no problem. If he comes out, we got a problem. So let's get ahead of the game and let's say that if his body is missing, in case his body is missing, that somebody stole it. That's how the enemy works against us. Jesus gave it at the beginning of his ministry. Matthew picks that message up and writes it all the way from the beginning all the way to the end. He writes on this subject. You know, what it, you know what the subject is? The third day. 
the third day of his burial. The scribes and the Pharisees always want extra biblical signs from Jesus than the scriptures. No matter how many times you gave them a scriptural answer, it wasn't enough. What authority do you do it? Well, did I run them off? Yeah. Did they go? Yeah. Is that enough? Anybody else that did that, anybody else that would do that would get burnt by fire from heaven. Did I get burnt by, did I get burnt by the fire from heaven for doing that? No. Isn't that sign enough? Listen, there is so much historical proof that if you messed with the temple or any part of it, you could get burnt alive, right? I mean, that, you get that gone. I, I just did it. What happened? The choir sang. Da, 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 da. I mean, the choir sang. The, no lightning came down. No fire from heaven. The voices. There's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's the voice I heard. <laughs> you guys try to go in the temple and do that and see what's happening. Go in tomorrow and try it. There will be so many funerals. You want proof that I have authority? One well, more proof, proof do you need? You try it. Anybody want to try it? Hey, there's a second round. Listen, there's just a couple of strikers. Go throw them out. Get burnt. Jeez. That's not enough. No, no, no. Then he gives him a scripture. He gives him a scripture in John 2. He gives him scripture. Let me get, well, let me tell you. This is the thought I have. This, my zeal comes from God about his ministry and about his work. This is my father's business. I'm about my father's business. He gets, so he gives him scripture. Extra, listen, they don't like that. No, I want something like, I want something like, Dark over the earth from 12 to 3. I want something like, when he dies, I want an earthquake. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want something big, you know. Something that would catch the 6 o'clock news. So God gave him that. Christ on the cross from noon to 3, where he suffers for the sins of the world. He shut the lights off on earth. He shut, God shut the lights off on earth, and it wasn't enough. He caused an earthquake. When Jesus said, receive my spirit, an earthquake hit Israel, and it wasn't enough. It is never enough. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's never enough. Show me a sign. Show me a sign. A sign. Here's what he told him. Destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. Some will say to me, Ron, what does it matter? What does it matter? What does it matter? As long as you believe that he was... Listen, I agree. As an unbeliever, I didn't have to know that. I had to believe that he died on the cross for my sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day. I believe that, and I got saved. You know why I preach it? Because it mattered to Jesus. The third day was important to Jesus. It's important not to let somebody lie to us and say he died on Friday, was buried on Saturday, and raised on Sunday. That's a lie. That's not what Jesus said. It's not what he taught. It's not true. The third day does matter. It mattered to Jesus. It matters to me. It matters to me. This is the second thing. It mattered to his personal disciples. <laughs> Matthew, after the resurrection of Christ, Matthew, it dawned on Matthew. Matthew went back and documented every time. He went back to his old, old notebooks. He went back to his old notebooks. 
where he put all the teachings of Christ in. And he documented it all the way through. The common thread of his ministry was the third day. It mattered to the disciples after the resurrection on the third day, John 2, 22. It was after his resurrection that disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had spoken. Now they're on board. Let me tell you, you won't be on board until you come to this place in your life where faith comes by the word of God, double-checked and triple-checked. From the third day resurrection, the disciples of Jesus Christ began to preach a gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. They did it throughout the entire book of Acts. When you read Acts 1, 1 through 12, you see the Jerusalem church. That's their message. The message is correct. Christ, Christ died for our sins, was buried three days, and was raised from the dead. Now, they had lived through it. And they're writing from personal experience. And you should read the book of Acts. You ought to read 1 through 12 and just pay attention to the way the gospel is preached. Philip. Philip, who, come to, who, who, who was part of this group of, of Acts 1 through 12. Listen, Philip preached to the Samaritans the gospel message of the death, burial, and resurrection. He preached that Jesus was raised on the third day gospel. And it was, it was by the time Philip began to preach this, the death, three days of burial, and resurrection had already been coined the gospel. Listen to this. This is, this is Philip in Acts 8 preaching to the Samaritans. Verse 25 and 40. Here's verse 25. So then, they, so then they has solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord. They started back to Jerusalem, listen, and were preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. They, listen, the death, three-day burial, and resurrection is now called the gospel by the early disciples. They call it the gospel, the good news, the good news that God wants to save you, the good news that God has come to save you. The good news. They call it the gospel. The good news. So it mattered, to the, it mattered to Jesus. It mattered to his personal disciples after they had experienced the resurrection of Christ himself. And thirdly, it mattered to the apostle Paul. It mattered to the apostle Paul who preached the third day of burial to the resurrection as an essential part of the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is in this passage that he lays out the three parts of the gospel in verses 3 and 4. For I delivered to you as of first importance. First importance. And he's going to lay them out. What I have received. One, look at the word that. Circle the word that on your paper. That. One, that. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Two, see the word that? Circle it. They're important in the Greek. That's one, two. <laughs> That's one, two in the Greek. That's one, two. And that he was buried three days, three-day burial. How do I know it? Watch the third one. Circle the third one. And that. That's one, two, three. There's three parts to a gospel, not one part. Not two parts, three parts, three parts to the gospel. And that he was raised on the what? Third day of what? What was just before it? Burial. Oh, geez, man. He dies on a cross. He's into burial on the third day of the burial. It's a sequence of events. I am working for whatever I'm getting today. A cup of coffee and a donut. I'm cheap, ain't I? I mean, you get me cheap. And then he was raised on the third day. Watch this. According to the what? 
da 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 Paul preached this gospel of grace salvation to the ends of the earth. You pick Paul up in Acts 13 through 28, he's preaching the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. Where did he get that idea? Acts 1.8. The Jew, the Jew took it. They, they were following. They went Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and stopped. Paul picked it up in 13 and took it to the rest of the way. You boys got it. Thank you. I got it from here. The rest of the world. He ran the Roman Empire. Listen, Paul in his lifetime of ministry converted the Roman Empire to Jesus Christ. Think about that. You talk about God can do mighty things with, with somebody in his hands that's willing to go. Huh? Instead of saying, well, God, I would go, but I got, I got five things here. Clear them out, and I'll go. <laughs> You'll never get those five things. Listen, either you go or you don't go. Either you're into ministry. Listen, you're never going into ministry. You're in it. Young men going to, it, through our seminary, I quiz them all the time. Are you going to seminary for ministry, or are you going to seminary because you're in ministry? Because if you're here going through it, you'll never make it. You never make it. Always be something. Well, Ron, I would, but that's spelled with two T's. That's how that's spelled. Listen, Paul goes on, from Acts 13 through 28, goes on three missionary trips across the Roman Empire. Across the Roman Empire. I mean, he kicked the doors in. And how did he run that ministry? God opens doors. God opens doors. Paul evangelized the entire continent of Asia Minor and said, should I go, should I go north? Should I, where should I go? I mean, I'm, I'm at a, where should I go? And God gave him the call to Macedonia. Go west, Paul. Go west. You know what Paul did? When he crossed the Aegean Sea, he put his eyes on Spain. <laughs> you talk about a visionary. He put his eyes, when he crossed the Aegean Sea into Macedonia, he put his eyes on Spain. You got to listen to me when I tell you mine, mine are uh, not quite that far, but they're on Moody. They're on Moody. And I'm headed to Moody. Moody, Alabama. You got to pay attention to that stuff. The call was to Macedonia, and when he got to Macedonia, God said, Spain. They had to look it up on a map. <laughs> it's like when he called me to Moody. I had to look it up. Moody what? You got to pay attention to that stuff. Got to pay attention to that stuff. Here's my final point. This is usually when I get a big clap at a a standing ovation. The third day burial to the resurrection mattered to the enemies of Jesus Christ. Don't be saying it don't matter because it mattered to the bitter enemies of Jesus Christ, the guys who hung him on a cross. The third day of his burial mattered to them. This is recorded in Matthew, the 27th chapter, 62 through 66, and 28 verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 15. I'm, I'm just trying to help you out. You do go home and read this stuff, don't you? I'll write this down for me. It's important that you go home and read these passages as they're... You ought to check them because my math is terrible. You know my numbers get crazy. 
So you, for no other reason, you ought to check them out just because my numbers get nuts. Uh, dyslexia or something, I don't know what it is. Something that costs you money to find out, I know that. Now, apostate Jews. Listen, who are the enemies? Apostate Jews. Listen, they go to Pilate. The same group that hung them on a cross are now worried. We got three days of burial before we can get out of this baby. Oh, no. We thought we had him when he died. Somebody said, well, you remember that little group of guys? They had her. Well, we did it. Da, 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 da. They're celebrating. We, he's deader than a doornail. Got him. There's a the little guy that sits in there took notes. He said, yeah, but. He made a big deal about the third day of his burial that he'd be raised from the dead. Oh, no. Oh, no, I remember that. Oh, no. Well, we got to go three more days. Well, we better make sure that the disciples or somebody don't get in there and steal them. Okay, we'll go to Pilate, and we'll plead our case before Pilate. So they do. Sir, they say, we remember that when he was alive, that deceiver said, after three days I am to rise again. Therefore, give us orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. What, what are they going to... Wait, 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 wait. What are they making secure for three days? The tomb. The tomb. Not the cross. That's over. No. Now we got to worry about the tomb. <laughs> the tomb. How long is it going to be in the tomb? Three days and three nights. Oh, no. The tomb. Now, if my grandson Ben would be here, I did that for his sake. He's home today watching me. Ben, for you, the tomb. <laughs> I did that for Ben today. I, can, I promise you, he's doing the tomb. Yes, maybe it'll get quicker than three years. Therefore, give orders. Give orders to make secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal him away and say to the people, he has been risen from the dead. And oh, no, the last deception will be worse than the first. Boy, you talk about people who know deception. These guys, they're masters of deception. We got them. Washington is full of them today. Masters of deception. Jeez. So they get Pilate to put the Roman seal on the tomb. Anybody gets, anybody gets in there and gets in, buddy. <laughs> Roma. <laughs> I'm a little more animated today. <laughs> because of Ben. I have to do that. I'm teaching a small class as well here today. Post guards. They post guards. P police. They got the temple police and the Roman soldiers. That tomb is secure. They can go home and sleep for three days. Nobody is coming out of that grave. <laughs> Don't you love to sing on Sunday morning up from the grave here? Don't you love that song? Oh, they're going to, listen, I think it'll be sung in hell all day long. All day long, they're going to hear this song up from the grave here, and not you. <laughs> That's what I think. If I was leading a choir, that's what they'd sing. Here are the guards. The guards shook. They got an earthquake. An earthquake. An earthquake. Gets all, gets all the doors 
except one. And there are all kinds of, in the graveyard, all of a sudden, only certain tombs are opened. When Christ dies on the cross, boom, an earthquake hits. And only certain tombs in the graveyard are opened. Except that one that's totally sealed. They're all open. At the time he died on a cross, and they're open for three days because we're in a holiday, and nobody can shut them down. The Jews would get defiled. And when they looked at the markers, not 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 like five in a row, but this jumping all over the graveyard. Chikaboom, 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 chikaboom. And they're going like, what's going on? How, how, how does an earthquake do that? It jumps over. No, I don't know. Let's check out who's buried there. Oh, this, this was a follower of Christ. What about the second tomb? Follower of Christ. How about the third one? Follower of Christ. How about the fourth one? Follower of Christ. How about the fifth one? Follower of Christ. How about the sixth one? Follower of Christ. How many do we have in here open? Uh, we have 26. I don't know. I just gave a number. But a lot. All followers of Christ. Who after his resurrection went back into the city and saying, da 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 I was buried, but now I'm out of the grave. Do you know that story in the Bible? Do you know that story's in the Bible? In Matthew, the 27th chapter? You will if you read about us. And what happened? The guards? <laughs> the guards at the graveyard? They have gone nuts. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And that is, don't you like that pun? Where are they? The graveyard. They pull the graveyard shift. I don't know the last time I saw Sergeant Tom. Hey, look dead. Well, what about his buddies? They looked, all of them looked dead. They look dead. We thought, well, we won't have to dig graves because there's a bunch of them. So they got a problem because the guards go back and they tell them, holy catfish, you never believe the night I had. Three days and three nights in a graveyard like this, graves popping open and... <laughs> They gave, the apostate Jews gave them money to the soldiers and said, you are to say his disciples came by night and stole them away while, they were, while, while you were asleep. That's a capital offense. They were like, no, sir, I don't think I can do that. I've already had a death experience. I don't have to have the real thing. They said, do not worry, we'll cover. That's how well they think they've got Pilate in their pocket. And so they went on and gave this terrible lie for money. And if anybody in the whole wide world knew that wasn't true, it was them, didn't they? There were a lot of graves open, but one of them that wasn't was Jesus. That'll come later. That'll come after the three days are over. Not when he died on the cross. Now I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you who this message today of the third day matters. It matters to unbelievers. That Christ died for our sins, was buried, and raised from the dead third day. Listen, Paul says the gospel, the gospel is that he died for our sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried and on the third day raised from the dead. 
Everybody in the first century preached that as the gospel. The Jews, the, the converted Jews, right out, right out of Acts 1 through 12, preached it. Paul picked it up in 13 through 28, preached it, and it is the message of the Christian church. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that he died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day raised from the dead. They call that... So why did I preach such a message as this today? I'll tell you why. Because of Philippians 1.6. On the very bottom of your paper, I preach that because it is deep, deep within my heart. And I got it from Paul. Knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel, I must defend the gospel of Jesus Christ both its message and its mechanics. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and on the third day raised from the dead. Listen to me now. When you believe that, you get saved. Romans 1.16. The gospel, <clears throat> now listen to me. The gospel is the power of God to save those who believe. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Not of works. Because all the boast goes to the Father through the work of the Son. We're the benefactors of it. And so, our Father, we thank you today for these that have come our way to study with us on this Easter Sunday. Up from the grave he arose. On the third day, Father, we're so thankful that you sacrificially gave your son who would die for our sins, who would be buried for three days and three nights, and would be raised by the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells every church age believer the moment he believes. We're so blessed. It's a shame, Father, that we don't study the Bible. It's a shame that Christianity in the church doesn't study the Bible. Because it is with clarity that I preach this message today on the third day, three days and three nights of burial. It mattered to Jesus, it mattered to his personal disciples, it mattered to Paul. It mattered to the enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It matters to the poor unbeliever that needs to believe it to be saved. It matters to me because I'm called and appointed to be a defense for the gospel of Jesus Christ, both in its message and its mechanics. I pray that for our church can't speak for all of them, but I can speak for us. I pray today, Father, for those who are listening with us on the Internet, that they would take this message. Listen, you don't have to understand it all, but you do have to believe that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead on the third day to be saved. Understand that clear, clear as anything. Believe it and be saved because the gospel is the power of God to save you, and you're saved by grace, not of yourself. You're saved by grace. It's a gift. Receive it today by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.